Hey guys, it's Dennis and Michelle. We are here with Chef Francisco Ramirez, the bad chef from Bad Chef in East Petersburg. We are so excited because today he is going to show us how to cook a Valentine's Day meal for two to four people for just under $25 by getting all the ingredients at Wise Marcus. Hi, Chef. Hi, how are you guys doing? Hey, we're doing great, Chef. Uh, tell us what we're making today. All right, so today we're going to make uh, a, a, riso a mushroom risotto. And then we also gonna have a chicken breast that we're gonna stop with some ricotta cheese that we're gonna fold in some spinach. Um, and so well, you can't go wrong with a beautiful creamy ris a mushroom risotto, earthy, creamy. And then we have our chicken breast with uh, uh, ricotta cheese and some spinach on it. It's f fabulous. I am so excited. I love risotto. So let's get started. All righty, so let's get started. So. Uh, we're gonna start heating up a saute pan. So what we're gonna uh, get first, we're gonna get uh, the chicken done. Uh, we're gonna work first stuffing for the chicken, the ricotta cheese. I already have a little bit of ricotta. I got about a cup and a half of ricotta cheese already in a bowl. Uh, to that, what we're gonna do, we're gonna saute the spinach. So we're using a frozen product. Uh, you can get it twice. Uh, so we can start with a little bit of olive oil. And you can and then we go add a little bit of uh, we're gonna add a little bit of those shallots that we already have diced up, a little bit of shallots, and we're gonna add a little bit also of that garlic. Let's start building flavors. Uh, one of the things that I always tell my staff here is uh, to make sure that we build flavors. Uh, layers of flavors, it's just uh, it's one of those things where it just enhances uh, flavor into anything that we make. So once we got that uh, shallots and garlic going, and that fire nice and sizzling, we want the shallots to start, the garlic to start getting very fragrant. And uh, we want the shallots to start uh, turning translucent. We don't want to get them burned or too dark. Um, I may say we get that. We're going to add our spinach to it. I can smell it already. Right? Yeah. It smells you. so good. Best part of uh, cooking, and I mean, right now, I mean, we're here. You guys are at your home. I'm here at the pub, and we're by ourselves, which is a beautiful thing. Uh, one of the most challenging things now with this whole thing of, you know, you got to cook with a mask, and that's one of the things you miss is that it smells. Oh, you yeah. Know? No, you took a tasting in it, and it's sometimes it's crazy, but you know, uh, we do what we gotta do to keep ourselves safe here. Got the spinach saute. This should only take about two, three minutes. If you want to speed up the process a little bit, but I use what I like to do, and just another thing to add up. Uh, you know, we're cooking, we already said we're gonna use some uh, some beer, but if you have white wine at your house, any other one, you know. White one will be preferred. We add a little bit of that. Get some, some of that steam going. And again, a little more flavor here. My chef, we're using our uh, Winter Boss. It's a Belgian wit. Uh, it's very popular. It's got already a little bit of lemongrass and orange zest to it. So uh, it's just a perfect beer just to kind of for this dish. How much beer, chef? About a half a cup? Uh, I would say not even. I would say about a quarter of a cup to it. Oh, good. That leaves a lot for me to drink. <laughs> when you can let it evaporate, and it's just only it's going to do is just give a little more flavor. And if you're drinking the other half a cup, that's completely fine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm going to season it up a little with salt and pepper. A so that's where it needs, it stays there. It's still kind of nice and green, which we want. We want to keep those nice colors, those bright colors of the spinach. Then yeah, that's like good. This, we're going to pop this in the cooler, your refrigerator. Just to kind of let it chill for a little bit. Uh, we don't want to fold it into the uh, ricotta cheese all that uh, very hot. Or if not, you know, you're going to soak up the mixture or the stuffing is going to become very runny. 
Uh, to that, once that's what we're going to add a little bit of an egg. It's going to give it a little bit more of a texture, uh, and I'll hold it out. But we'll wait on that once we uh, finish up with the once we get uh, the chicken going. Okay. And chef, you said oh, you just, just, pop, just pop that right in the fridge. Yep, just pop it right in the fridge. Just kind of pull it down a little bit. So you let us know, Michelle, when you have that. Uh, that spinach is ready to go. Oh, we're working with the chicken next. We're to get the chicken ready. Okay. So I got those chicken breasts. You can see a beautiful chicken breast that we got on Wise Market. Um, very minimum. They do a lot of the work for you already. Uh, yep. There you go. I just I just threw my um, other part of, but yes, that is exactly what I got mine. So they already done a lot of the work for you. It's just very minimum trim, just to kind of get some of these uh, excess fat out of it. And that's all we want to do. Just gonna trim that up. More presentation, it looks better. Okay. Want to, uh, take a bite of uh, some grizzle. Are we gonna butterfly these breasts or leave them whole? No, we are actually. What we're gonna do is we're gonna actually do it. Uh, we're gonna create a pocket. So we're gonna go from the top side. Of the breast or the thicker part of it, and yeah. we're gonna do a slight uh, uh, pocket in them where we actually gonna stuff in the ricotta cheese to make sure that we're gonna make. What should the oven okay. be created to? The oven, we should do it about 350 degrees. Okay. Uh, convection oven works just f works great. If not, you know, got it. A regular oven will be 350 the same, but I'm just gonna take a little bit longer. Uh, we wanna cook this chicken to an internal temperature of 165. Uh, reason why we're stuffing it with cheese is uh, so we want to make sure that any of the uh, uh, blood or, uh, or the raw, you know, chicken gets cooked well completely, and any of that that goes into the cheese also uh, uh, goes to a safe, uh, safe temperature. Something like this. Let me see. Exact. Exactly. That's perfect. We can actually. That'll be probably easier. I go a little bit, so let me see if you can see here without me stabbing myself here. Uh, but I use a long knife, like either a paring knife or a boning knife, and I just do a small indentation. So I'm just going to go around it. What we're doing is we're just creating a, a pocket. Okay. You see? I'll stuff the, chick the chicken with the ricotta cheese. All right, and then right after that, I like to season the uh, chicken breast. Some salt and pepper always, um, you know, I go a little bit on the inside. And I also do a little bit on the outside as well. So again, we, uh, we have a chicken breast. Uh, we already created a pocket in it. Where we actually going to, you know, and if, if you don't have, uh, you can do it with a uh, spoon. A uh, small spoon, you can do it with a uh, piping bag if you had a, your house, a small piping bag, or you can actually use also uh, like a Ziploc bag and then just make a little uh, cut on the plant uh, on a corner. And then that was, makes it a little bit easier to stuff the press. But again, you know, you use you can use what you have at the house. Um, spoon always works just fine as well. So. I'm probably going to use a spoon. Chicken, Michelle, uh, spinach is ready to go, right? Yes. And at this point, we're going to fold the chicken, the other spinach, into the ricotta. How much ricotta did you say, Chef? About a cup, cup and a half is fine. Okay. We have to use just enough to be able to stop the chicken breast. I mean, if, if you have... Uh, um, I want to say probably a cup will be a little bit more than what you need, but if you're, you know, you're cooking for two, I always say cooking for two is the hardest thing to do. You always have a bunch of leftovers. So, uh, you know, for chicken breast, the pack I got had three chicken breasts. That would be more than enough to be able to stuff uh, three chicken breasts. Okay. So we're going to fold in the uh, ricotta, and then we're going to crack an egg open, and we're going to... Put that in there with that mixture. So the egg's going right in there, huh? Right in there. The egg okay. is under. It's going to keep the ricotta cheese from melting all over. And, uh, especially when we're, because we're, we're baking it, 
Uh, we just add it like that. It's just going to go everywhere. You know, by the time you get the chicken breast out, there's nothing in it. So the breast is going to become that, the egg is going to become that binder. Uh, we're going to add some salt, pepper. Uh, you know, we're going to add a little bit, if you have the house, a little bit of red pepper flakes. You can add a little bit of those. Uh, some folks like to add a little bit of uh, lemon, lemon zest to it. Uh, just to kind of uh, bring some of that, uh, some citrus flavor still. And then again, and that is uh, optional. So then we're just going to incorporate this uh, ricotta cheese in the egg mixture. We're going to make sure that it's nice so you see that the uh, ricotta is going to start turning a little bit of like a yellow cream color to it. Oh, there you go. That's what you, this is what you almost going to end up with. It's this beautiful, creamy mixture. Okay. It almost looks like spinach artichoke dip. It, it does, yeah. Like exactly. Perfect, exactly. So then at this point, what we're going to do is we're going to stuff our chicken with it. And again, you can do, you can, I'm going to do it with a spoon. You'll see that, the, you know, the volume of it starts, uh, gets a little bit, if the, the chicken breast, you know, nice and plump. That's what we're looking for. Now, Chef, I'm doing two chicken breasts, but if I have some of the spinach mixture left over, I could do a third or a fourth. Yeah, you could, certainly. And that makes yeah, perfect. That is absolutely right. That's, uh, that you know, the package that I bought from Weiss actually came with three chicken breasts. So that's what I ended up doing, you know. So I did one already now with a spoon. Chef, I'm having trouble getting this in the hole. Can I just hammer the chicken flat and then fold it over? As you, can. Yeah, you can. You can certainly do that. Chicken. You can actually okay. um, um, very easily. You can flat. You can pound it out so it's enough, and then you can put enough in it and then roll it out. So do like almost like a roulade, and that works just fine. Okay, I'm gonna do it that way because um, I'm not good at piping and sticking stuff in chicken. Oh, so. Okay, that'll be my hack. These are good to go in now, Chef, right? Oh, yeah, beautiful. Perfect. That's what I got. Why well, uh, my chickens are there, so at this point, I'll drizzle a little bit of oil. You can do a little bit of a cooking spray if you add to create a binder. There it and then we have we already pre-seasoned the top with a little salt and pepper i like to finish it up with a little more salt and pepper uh to give it a little bit of color i use a little of uh, paprika but you can use regular paprika you can use uh chili powder it'll be great as well give it a little kick to it uh and even salt and pepper and if you have some dry herbs like uh Italian seasoning, Italian herbs, some oregano. You can also sprinkle that on top. So, yeah, <laughs> here we go. Then we go in the oven. How long does that go in for? Now, it'll be about 25 minutes. Give and take 25 minutes. I usually put about 20 minutes, and then I'll check, see where we at. Uh, look, you know, uh, stick a thermometer right in the thick, in the in, right in the middle, just to kind of make sure that we got that 165. But 25 minutes, we will not, these are very hard to overcook just because of the uh, creaminess of the uh, uh, cheese on them. And then we're on to the risotto. Now we're on for the risotto. So yeah. Every looks time. nice, Michelle. Uh, this is what it looks like if uh, you pound it out. And Beautiful. Yep. <laughs> so then the, the risotto, we can, um, you know, it was something that we can do in, in, in one pot. I like to saute the mushrooms separate. Reason why is if you saute the mushrooms in the pan, then add your um, uh, risotto and everything. If it kind of turns the risotto nice, like gray color, almost. Um, not only that, I like the texture of getting the mushrooms sauteed. Kind of gives a nice color to that. And then we fold them right at the end uh, into the risotto, and it just makes it beautiful. So we'll start with the mushrooms? Yep, we're going to start with the mushrooms. Again, we're going to start a saute pan. Now I'm going to use the same pan as the spinach, so... Is that, that works. Okay? Yep, right. that works. 
I don't understand. I mean, I have the luxury here of having like a bunch of saute pans and stuff like that. And then, and you have you know, dishwashers, dish right? Like, yeah, I got a big dish machine back dishes. there. We can pump everything <laughs> in and it's beautiful. You know, <laughs> now, I do this at home. And then the wife looks at me and be like, hey, who's cleaning here now? <laughs> I, I, go, I think that I'm cooking at the restaurant just the same way. So I'm like going through like five or six different pans. Now, Chef, I like mushrooms. So I'm going to use the entire container. That's uh, no problem. That is exactly what I'm going to do on my side as well. <laughs> a little bit of butter works just fine as well. It's just a little bit of fat so that you can get these mushrooms sauteed. Uh, I'm going to use a little bit of, of those diced shallots that we have. Okay. And we're going to put a little bit of garlic as well in there. All right. Are we, gonna... still, are we still saving some shallots or can we use the rest of the shallots? Not, not the rest, just a little bit. And if you don't have enough, just a little bit of garlic is just fine. It's just to add a little flavor. We will need a little bit of those shallots into the risotto. Got it. It's just not, it's not much. It's just a little bit just to get some of those flavors going. Now we're just gonna let these uh, uh, saute medium, uh, uh, medium high. Uh, you can start on high and then kind of lower it down a little bit. We don't want to burn. We don't want to uh, also get them way to caramelize. It must be that we are in, uh, in, you know, doing this live because I'll be honest with you, I'm never that organized either. <laughs> I'm always running around the kitchen. It's like, you know, I'm like, I mean, if I'm in the kitchen, it's like, all right, clear it out because here I go. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God, everything's right there. It's beautiful. That's funny because at Man Chef you have an open kitchen. We can see exactly what you're doing. I know. So well, you imagine in there, you look organized. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Who would have thought? And then I have a tattoo to my arm. It says "Missing Plus." Everything in order. Yeah. <laughs> so my some way when I'm home. Woo! Oh. <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey, Chef. I gotta be honest. When I heard you were cooking with us today, I was kind of hoping you were gonna do those Mad Chef Brussels sprouts that you're known Brussels. for. Oh, oh man, this is a secret. He's not going to give away the secret recipe. Uh, all right, listen, I, there's, there's, there's never a secret of my chef. Actually, I have a fryer uh, there going, and we can certainly have some of that towards the end. But if you start seeing that they start to significantly, I lower them down a little bit. I like to get that nice color to them. I don't know if you can see them. Start yeah. turning out. Caramelization. I like to do that thing where you shake the pan. Is that a chef thing? Shake the pan. He just did that. That, that looks a little scary. It looks very fancy. You know what? One of the I used to have a chef in school. He used to say, "Why are you doing that? All you're doing is just taking the pan from the heat." So all it's doing is take making it look, you know, longer. But hey, it looks all good. You're like you're here. You're like, oh, I can flip. <laughs> Funny, you do that a couple of times, and all of a sudden, half of the food goes everywhere. You're like, <laughs> <laughs> that's what happens for being fancy. Believe it or not, you try to saute, you know, you try to do that with a pan. And in culinary, because we have to flip, you know, either omelets and things like that. They have to, you know, we practice with a slice of bread and a pan. And you have to commit to, like, doing that wrist move to be able to flip it. That's kind of how you practice. So that's a little technique there. You ever want to flip some stuff at the house, look fun, see what your pancake like. Just practice with a saute pan and a slice of bread and just kind of flip it around a couple of times. These mushrooms are really <laughs> starting to smell good. Exactly, we would love it. Except when it starts <laughs> going on the floor. And then, you're, you know, and, you know I have an American bulldog called Chef, and Chef loves that part. Then he's like, oh, I get to eat. <laughs> and then I'll just what we're gonna do is we're just gonna put them on the side for now. We're gonna start working on the uh, risotto. Olive oil, butter works just fine as well. What we want to do is the same thing. We want to saute. We want to saute the a uh, uh, little bit of shallots and garlic. Okay, is this where we use the rest of it? Yes, this is where we're going to use the rest of it. I have a confession to make. I used all my shallots in the chicken. No problem. It's all right. <laughs> all right. You got a little bit of garlic? I got a lot of garlic, baby. Perfect. Garlic is always wonderful. 
Now, shallots, um, they're different than onions. I, fi I find that they're fa a little fancier, like nicer taste and smell. They are. It's just they're more, they got a little bit more of a delicate flavor to them. Yeah. Um, you know, sweet onion is, or uh, a dahlia or a sweet onion works too. I mean, even like a regular, you know, white onion works just fine. I prefer to use the uh, shallots just because they have a little bit more of a delicate flavor to them. Um, uh, it's, but that's my preference. Uh, everybody, you know, you, you can, again, you can use a white onion, you can use a yellow onion. A yellow onion is just a little bit more of a pungent flavor. So you don't want it to taste just like, uh, you don't want it to taste just like, uh, uh, I mean, it's just, it's adding flavors without one uh, overpowering the other. Okay. All right. Now we got that garlic. I like to add the, the risotto to it. Set up on the top of the half. Works just fine. What we're going to do is just uh, while that is, the uh, pan is nice and hot, uh, we want to toast that rice a little bit. And you'll see it starts. You're gonna start getting a little bit of that, uh, almost like a nutty smell to it. We'll do this for about a minute or so. And at this point, part you do wanna keep it moving. Uh, you know, you don't wanna let it sit too long or it okay. burns very easily. And yeah, you just gonna continue to move it around until you start getting like a little nutty smell to it. Just kind of toasting the uh, outside membrane of it, of the uh, Oreo. Believe it or not, I've done. Uh, I mean, you know, obviously risotto. Where you for risotto, we're using the aborio, and it's because it is a very high starch uh, uh, grain. Or you know, uh, and, and it works because that's kind of what we want at the end. You want that nice creaminess. Uh, but you know, sometimes you don't. You don't have all the the, the aborio. You can use like short grain rice. Why? Just, in case, just in case uh, someone out there watching has never cooked, used a bori, I just want to show everybody what it looks like. Yep. Just a little bit bigger than than regular grain rice. So now at that point, about a quarter cup of uh, white wine, uh, beer, uh, just to kind of start getting some of that uh, to steam up. I just added more. You can see that immediately starts steaming off. What should our heat be on right now? Because mine's really boiling. About me, uh, medium high. Okay. Now we just gonna you see it starts fizzling on the inside, and you know we just want to keep an eye on it. Just quit up with uh, risotto. And you got to cook it in stages. So we're gonna add our quart of uh, chicken broth in three stages. All right. Okay. Uh, so we're gonna continue to move this until it starts almost drying out some of that uh, uh, liquid that we added, that quarter cup. We're gonna stir it up until you start seeing that pretty much it evaporates, which is kind of what I have right now. If you got, I don't know, you can see there, but it's already. And so at that point, we're going to use one third of that quart of uh, of chicken broth that we have. Okay, Chef, I um I forgot my chicken broth. Can I use water and um, a chicken bouillon cube? Yes, no problem okay. whatsoever. Just make your um, if you want pre-make your um, like hot water and, and add your chicken bouillon to it, just to kind of um, add it to that, or you can actually add the chicken bouillon. And then just add the stages of water to it, and you should be fine. How much broth oh, did you say? Okay. So we're going to use one third of the quart. So we're going to use one third. We're going to let it cook. We're going to use the one, another third, and then we're going to finish it up with, a, with the last third of it. All right? Okay. And that's the key with risotto is uh, you want to cook it in stages. It's not like regular rice where you can add everything to it and it just um you know works that it works that way if you want to cook it at a higher temperature uh, is this something you should stir often yes you do you want to because of the high starch content on it 
you don't want it to get to uh, stick to the pan. I just peeked at the chicken breasts. Ooh, they look good. They look yeah. good? Yeah. Very nice. Are we still cooking on a medium high? Yes, we are. You should have a nice sizzle in there. Yep. 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 And we're going to continue to let it go. You don't have to. You can let it go here and there. Come back. Scare it up. So the key is so that it doesn't stick to the pan. And then okay. just keep watching until it uh, starts evaporating. Once that first part that we, that, that first part of liquid that we added to it has evaporated, then we're going to top it up again. We're going to do that, you know, second time and then after that a third time. Sometimes, depending on the rice and how much you add it, you always try it. You know, you don't want to overcook it. You certainly don't want it to be undercooked where it's still kind of grainy and, um, you know, you, you'll know that the actual uh, rice kernel is still kind of hard. Yeah. Nice and creamy, but yet you want to hold that full texture of the rice itself. All right. Should we? Should I add more liquid? It looks like mine's all yeah, evaporated. Yeah, yours already evaporated. Mine is almost there. Okay. Yep. I was add another third of that of that uh, quart that we had. How many cups in a quart? Four. Uh, Four cups in a quart. No, no. So yeah, four cups in a quart. Yes. Okay, okay. I always ask Alexa, Michelle. <laughs> So, see, mine is already kind of getting there. And it goes fairly quickly. I mean, you can start seeing that some of that liquid gets, uh, it, there's, it, it starts to thicken up. Yeah. See some of that starch is coming out, which is the beauty of the soda. It's got that nice, creamy thick. So now mine is almost dried up. So at that point, I had another third of that. Just enough to cover it up. You can see your rice is still bubbling. Nice uh, simmer in there. Um, and, and you see that it starts uh, start to double in size. It gets yeah. big creamier. One of those things where rice, people, you know, you put, say, oh, I'm going to add three cups to it. That's shipping, you know, three cups. And there'll be six cups of cooked rice, even seven cups of cooked rice. It's a lot. It's starting to stick a little at the bottom. Is there anything I could do? Is it sticking to the bottom? Maybe lower the temperature a little bit. Okay. Just lower your temperature and add a little bit more of that um of the uh of your of your stock to it. Okay. So this is where I am on here. You see that the grain has kind of doubled in size already. Yeah. We don't have any color. We don't want to caramelize it. We just kind of want it to continue to cook and evaporate some of that liquid that we're adding to it. If you see that it starts evaporating too fast, lower the temperature. You can always add a little bit more of the, uh, the stock. You probably add more beer, too. There you go. <laughs> oh, I'll add a little wine, sure. How's your chickens looking over there? Oh, so good. Yeah? Let me check. Yeah. I tell you one thing, I don't know, but it smells phenomenal over here. So I put it that smoked, done. I put that smoked pack paprika on top of mine and it really yep. gives you a nice color. Oh, yes, yeah. exactly. Yep. I think it looks you know, done. It looks good. Yeah, Probably it looks good. Too. But if anybody's be in our kitchens at this point, I'll say it smells phenomenal. So you know the path here. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if you can see, Michelle, the color of the grain starts to change a little bit. We have like this really uh, 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 white. It starts to become a little more translucent. And you start seeing like the outside membrane starts becoming more translucent and that very white part just kind of right in the center. That's what we're looking for. That means that the uh, uh, the, the grain itself is, co is cooking beautifully. That's what we're looking for. We want that rice to be completely almost... Uh, Translucent, you know. Okay. And you see, uh, you know, you know, we can also, we can also go in again. I have tasted spoon, so I check, and I look just to see where where we are. We're almost there. So my chicken's at about one forty. 
Yep. Yeah, we should have another 10 minutes and we should be good to go. Okay. That should be about where we're going to be with our risotto. Our risotto should be, I want to say, we're about 15 minutes, about 10, 10, 15 minutes away from it being uh, done, you know? Just keep stirring. Yep. I would, especially now at this point where it starts becoming nice and creamy, that's where we want to make sure that we keep staring it. Okay. Like Nemo, just keep swimming. Yeah. <laughs> if you guys got a spoon, try your rice. Let me know where you guys at over there. Okay. Just to see if we, mine still has a little bit of a crunch to it. I'm going to add a little bit of stock to it. If you don't have any more, you can use a little bit of beer. Yeah, it has a little bit of a crunch. It's still right? Yeah. Yeah. Labor of love, you know? Yeah. Especially for Valentine's. Yes, it's perfect. Is Mad Chef open for Valentine's Day? Uh, we will be on Sunday. That's Sunday. We will. Yeah? Yeah, we will be open at uh, 12 to... I mean, it's Sunday, so it'll be 12 to 8 in our normal hours. We always do a special menu uh, for that day. Also, we also run those. Uh, uh, we also like to run the uh, specials on the weekend, so we'll incorporate some of that into it. All right. This rice is almost there. Something's almost done. I'm gonna check the chickens real quick. Now, looks I amazing. Like I feel like it's almost there, but there's still yeah, a little uh, pretty much okay. well. All right, my chickens are about 160, which is beautiful. We can let them uh, rest, and they'll okay. carry to 165. Does that typically happen, Chef? When you take something out of the oven that you've been cooking, will it come up to? It'll actually come up a little more when you take it out. Yes, it will. Uh, actually, let me take that. Back. There's nobody here now. <laughs> um, yes, it, rule of thumb is about 10 degrees. Okay. So anything will get a big piece of meat or, 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 or meat. These chicken breasts are nice and thick and they have that. Uh, and they have the, uh, uh, the cheese. Oil. Yes. That will yeah, carry. Looks good. Check this out. Looks nice. I would say. They will carry over to, you know, about another 10 degrees to where you take them out. So if you want to cook a that perfect chicken breast where, you know, you want it to be uh, cooked, but it's still moist, 155, and then you let them sit outside and they'll come up to one, they'll come up to, uh, up to uh, 165. Wow. So as you can see now, you're, you've lost pretty much all that uh, white, really almost like kind of opaque white color that the rice had. Mm -hmm. Creamy. We'll try it one more time, see where we at. This yeah. one, we're going to add our mushrooms to it. Okay. We're going to put the mushrooms in. Those mushrooms that we sauteed before, we're going to fold them into the rice. Reason again, I say I do this is because I still keep that nice, beautiful color on the on the on the arborio. If you would have done it from the beginning, you would have this uh, super delicious, not very appealing gray kind of looking, um, uh, you know. So we add that, and we're gonna turn it off at this point. And we have some uh, Parmesan cheese. Oh, okay. A little Parmesan cheese to it. All right. How much Parmesan? Yeah, you can probably add about uh, two thirds of a cup. I like to leave another third just as a garnish before we, when we plate it, we'll put it on top. Michelle, keep going until I say stop. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> So, 
you have this beautiful, consistent, and creamy um, um, risotto now. Look at this. Wow. You know? Beautiful. Your mushrooms are in there. Now, at that point, it's just, uh, we're on the easy part of this whole thing. Just see how waiting, waiting on it. Which to me is one of my favorite things to do. Now, again, you can garnish this however you want. You can put a little bit of parsley. You can put a little bit of that. I, I like to use some of that uh, Parmesan cheese on top of the risotto. But what I like to do is take a little spoon and I can take a plate and I'll pour some. You see how most well, sure you can see there, but it's nice and creamy. It's not runny, but yet it has this beautiful, creamy kind of texture to it. Mushrooms just look beautiful where they're sauteed. They got that nice caramelization on the outside, but your risotto still looks very appealing, you know? And that's kind of the whole thing. Um, I like to put a little bit of the Parmesan cheese that we have on top of it. So we want to get those uh, chicken breasts, and you can serve it whole, or you can kind of go on a bias and do like three pieces, kind of exposing the inside of it. Oh. All right. Got a little bit of rosé sauce that I had previously here. I'm going to put that there, but I need it. I think all the flavors... Beautiful color that came out of that chicken out of the oven with that pimenton with the paprika. It's phenomenal. I always got a little bit of parsley lying around. Yeah. This is beautiful. Look, look at that chicken. Oh, it looks amazing. Beautiful color on the chicken. You got that uh, 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 ricotta with the spinach on the inside. Uh, and then you got that beautiful creamy uh uh, mushroom risotto to go with it. I mean, you can't go wrong with that. And remember, you can uh, you can make all of this for right around twenty five dollars from Wise Markets, which is very cool. A great Valentine dinner for you and your loved one. Absolutely, Mad Chef Francisco Ramirez. We can stop by and see you anytime at Mad Chef in East Petersburg. And they also do takeout. I know because we're there like twice a week. <laughs> I appreciate <laughs> hey. it. <laughs> and try their beers too. My favorite is O Face. Uh, thank you so much, man. Thank Francisco. you guys so much. And thank, thank you, you well done. Well done. Well done. This was a lot of fun. Have Valentine's Day, everybody. Enjoy. Happy Valentine's Day, everyone. Take care, guys.